Single player, first person shooters used to be an absolute gaming mainstay. Being on your own, shooting stuff in the face, was almost the stereotypical gaming experience. But now though, we're going around shooting stuff in the face alongside our friends, and it's not so often that we do it on our own anymore. Why is that? Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus is out on October the 27th for PC, PS4 and Xbox One. And as a big fan of 2014's The New Order, I can say I'm excited. I'm excited about getting stuck into a ridiculous, abrasive 10 to 12 hour FPS campaign, shoot in the f out of some Nazis on my own. That's right. I like to shoot things and follow a daft story while I'm doing it sometimes. And as much a fan as I am of Destiny, not every game needs to be an online live multiplayer world, Ubisoft. So Wolfenstein has me particularly excited because it offers a single player, story based FPS experience. Something which in recent years has become a bit of a rarity. Outside of last year's Doom and another Bethesda title, and maybe Titanfall 2, it's difficult to remember the last time we had a great FPS story campaign in the vein of classics like Half-Life 2. So what gives? Where are all these solo shooters at? Well, according to Arcade Berg, that is such an awesome games industry name. Mm. Arcade Berg. Awesome and real. That is the, the, yeah. the real name of a games industry man. I mean, if you were, if you were christened Arcade, <laughs> what industry, you what better no choice. Indus what better industry to get into? I mean, come on. Metalworks? No. <laughs> According to Arcade Berg, senior games designer at Wolfenstein developer Machine Games, it all comes down to Mahoney. In an interview with Game Watcher, Arcade Berg said, quote, Personal standpoint, a lot of it is probably money. A good, solid multiplayer game will yield great revenue, and people will tell their friends to get a game to play it with them. A multiplayer game on console will require people to keep the disc, whereas a single player game, some people will return it or trade it once they're finished with it, and of course, developers and publishers don't see any money from the trade. That's not the consumer's fault. But there are a lot of aspects like that that get accounted for business-wise. Well, when you put it like that, it does kind of make sense from the evil corporation's point of view. Why make one game that someone will finish and trade in without buying a single damn microtransaction when you can make a game like Card or Destiny that will keep players hooked? It will stop them from trading it in and maybe even get them to plump for some DLC and microtransactions. Which to you looks like the more profitable option. But it's not just that according to Mr. Berg. He said, quote, Technology is also a factor. Broadband is de facto now, so that's changed the playing field a lot. A lot of developers still creatively love to do single player campaigns just as much as ever because that's how you can really tell the story. Machine games just work on single player games, but multiplayer is just as fun and exciting. Berg's comments are very interesting in the wake of EA's closing down of developer of excellent single player titles, Visceral Games. They were making a linear and story driven Star Wars game when they got canned and their project got repurposed to have an online focus and broader appeal. Compare that with Wolfenstein 2, which is about to step out into the wild with no online functionality at all, pretty much. I'm going to start an anecdotal story now, Mike. Okay, back in, back my, in day. my day, <laughs> when I was playing games back in my day, Call of Duty, Medal of, Medal of Honor, all those games, like the original ones, they were all single player, shooter, you mm. take on a whole army with you, just you and your gun, pretty much. But in those games, the multiplayer was the afterthought, and it was just like an added extra. And it seems like games are completely flipped now, whereas the multiplayer is the mainstay of the game, like Battlefront and Battlefield, like there's all, all those, and the single player experience is now the afterthought. I mean, to me, I mean, I prefer my single player experiences, I'll, I'll be honest with you. So these these games are losing appeal the, um, the more and more that they produce them. So I know it just it just seems weird to me that everything's like arse about tit. And uh, as my man Arcade said just there, it is a lot to do with broadband, isn't it? Every Like the connectivity of the world, now we live a lot of our lives online in general, so it just kind of makes sense that gaming would move that way as well. It is interesting that the whole focus, like Gaz said, is, is kind of flipped to be about that rather than be about the single player. So the recent big example is Star Wars Battlefront 2, which has a kind of five hours to seven hour single player campaign we've just heard over the weekend. You know, that's the big selling point this time around. They're saying, oh, we've actually got a story this time. But let's not forget, they kicked one out of the door with no story at all and just a handful of maps. And they thought that was enough to charge a full price for as, as a game. So the second time around, it is still, all about the multiplayer, I mean the microtransactions, loot boxes model that they've got in there. It's all about money making, keeping people playing, keeping people cashing in and, and, and getting that revenue coming over and over and over again rather than just buying the game and trading it. I think it makes total sense the way he's presented it there. Why would you make a single player experience that people will trade in a week after launch when you can make a multiplayer game and get them to keep playing it 
keep buying your DLC, your microtransactions, and maybe never trading it in. I think that's what it boils down to. Like, if you're a businessman in the gaming industry, yeah. and you, you want to make profit, then it makes sense. Why would you make a single-player experience? You make the multiplayer experience, you can sell DLC, microtransactions, and such like. But for me, if you want to make money, just go and find a different industry. And this kind of thinking these days in the game industry, AAA games industry, that turns me off completely, honestly. Yeah. It makes me more wanting to go and play some indie games because they haven't got any of that bullshit. There's no microtransactions like DLC, any of that bullshit. You just get a full game and you get a full experience for that. And that, that's that's what I want. That's how I used to play my games. I just want some awesome games. I mean, just just give me some awesome games without any of that bullshit. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired today, Mike. <laughs> I'm tired. What you were just saying there, guys, that's exactly why I was so excited about something like Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, that came out earlier this year. I really, really enjoyed that because it was its own kind of six-hour story. There was none of the AAA shit around it. It was just a, an ambitious bit of, of gaming art that knew exactly what it wanted to do, and I didn't have to look at any loot boxes, I didn't have to look at an orc rubbing his hands while I'm thinking about what you know how much of my money he can take. I could just jump into that game, into the experience, get fully immersed in the experience and then come out of it closed experience. And you know, games like Doom, games like uh, uh, Titanfall 2, which did have obviously did have multiplayer elements, but they still had this really strong single player uh, campaign. And that's why those games have probably been remembered because the single player was so good. And that's the only that's the main flip side of the argument. These games that are great single player experiences stand out a hell of a lot more now because they're, they're noteworthy for that. That is the main argument, I think, in these days for, for making a strong single player offline focused game is that it'll get the word out. People will be interested in it. When was the last time you played a great single player shooter? And did you trade it in or sell it afterwards? Let us know down in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. There's another video to watch right there. Support us on Patreon if you're awesome. And we'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now.